Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to The 9% Show. I am your host, Stephen Burton. And here at The 9%, you already know, we keep everything 100. If I haven't done it, not doing it, or not about to do it, it would not come out my mouth. So in today's episode, man, it's going to be a great episode because it's something that really, I got to dive deep. I almost had to get on my, my couch with my psychiatrist over this type of episode. Is why being an entrepreneur is the hardest thing you'll ever do. Okay, and y'all know here at the 9%, matter of fact, since we're here at the 9%, let's, forget, let's not forget to take our toast. Shouts out to the 9% Club out there. Oh, and don't forget to like and uh, subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate all that support. It really helps, trust us. Please, if you're still watching at this point, come on now, show that support. But anyways, why being an entrepreneur is the hardest thing you'll ever do? Here at the 9%, we do not sugarcoat. We do not cookie cut anything. Okay. Everything here is just speaking the real. And when I tell you, um, I see a lot out there of, I mean, it's one thing to encourage people to be entrepreneurs and encourage people to be, uh, you know, be self-employed and be business owners, but it's another thing to make it sound like it's for everybody. And there's a reason there's only 9% of Americans that own an established business. There's a reason for that. And one of the main reasons is this is hard as heck. And so during this episode, I'm going to cover five things on what was really like the hardest things for me, like being an entrepreneur and things you guys could look out for. And then maybe even some things that for my other entrepreneurs that's out there to to realize you are not alone in this. Like other people feel the same way. And it's like we really go be diving deep here. Okay. so without further ado, we go jump into this thing. We're going to talk about number one. Um, actually, before I get to number one, I want to, I want to talk about some basic things real, real quick. So we all know uncertainty, uh, risking your own money. That's the top level stuff. I'm not trying to downplay that stuff and and not act like that's not hard to do. We've had episodes about quitting your job. We've had episodes about, uh, um, starting your business with minimal funds. Like all that stuff is risky. It's hard to do. It's hard to get over these mental hurdles. But for this episode, we're going to dive even deeper. We're going to, we're going, we're going to really go deep with this one. Um, I also would suggest watching the first episode we did when it was an interview with Shanita. Um, that episode was great because, she, our conversation was so deep. And I remember one of the things she said one time, she was just like, it's just hard, period. Like, like nothing else that comes with it. Like, that's all it is. It, it, was, it was just hard. And so, um, so I say all this stuff about uncertainty and risking your own money and things like that. Just, you know, that's a top level thing, but they didn't make the top five. But I at least wanted to shout those out real quick before we dive into this list to say that those are also hard hurdles to dive into, but we really want to dive deep here. So that's what we're going to do. So with number one, The number one thing of why being an entrepreneur is so hard, it is isolation and loneliness. Um, I'm being for real, like the first two years of starting my business, Perfect Tux, um, it was the first time I ever felt what depression felt like. Like, I remember telling my wife at the time, I remember telling her that, like I, I feel depression. I was always wondering, like when people say they're depressed and stuff, I could never get it. But like, it was a feeling of, even if I had a great sales day or the business made a lot of money, I still felt sad. I still felt uneasy. If we had a bad day, I still felt sad. I still felt uneasy. Like it was like nothing could have made me happy for like a long period of time. And anybody that knows me, I'm a happy somebody. Okay. I'm like, (laughs) I'm always happy. But it was just like, so to feel that feeling and to understand where that feeling was coming from, it was something, one, like I said, it stood out because I never felt it before. And then two, it was just like, oh my goodness, this is depression. Like, this is what it is. And so I think it it really came from being isolated, being lonely, because the journey that I went on was a was a lonely one and it was a solo one. I didn't have a co-founder. I didn't have uh, anybody else to lean on. I didn't have, um, I was like the first person in my immediate family. I mean, I would say my family, but like at least my immediate family to really, you know, quit their job and and start their business like to the scale that I did it. Like I, I just, I wasn't aware of anybody. So there was no one from my friends. Like there was, there was no one that I could reach out to and talk to about certain things. It was like, like people, you know, just say good job and want to support you from a top level. Whenever they see you, they might see you on the weekends. Like, oh, how's everything going? And you, you know, you're going to give them that class answer. Oh, it's going good. It's going good. 
all you know is like everything hit, just hit the fan yesterday, but you go, you know, put a smile on. Um, but that was, I will say I really didn't get comfortable with that ever. But one thing that happened to me, I did, I, I applied for a business accelerator program called Grid 110. Shout out to Grid 110. Um, but that was my first and only um, a business accelerator program that was the first time that I was actually in a room with other founders and and could like share my story and my experience and hear other people's experience and be like, wow, someone else is going through the same thing or be able to bounce some ideas or like to talk to someone that knows exactly how you feel. Like it was such a, um, it was such a relief. And like, I'm so thankful to that, that organization and to that group. Um, even to this day, like that network of what I got from that was just life changing to me. But like for, you know, two, three years, it was just, it was just literally me in a 500 square foot square office, like just, just me and myself and my feelings. And so, um, you know, the only, the, the things I could suggest to, to help that I would suggest having a co-founder, um, you know, you know, I went at this alone because, I, you know, I ain't got time to wait. You know what I'm saying? Like if I it's hard to find for me, it's always been hard to find people that was um, self motivated like I am. And then also could be the yin to my yang. Like the things I'm not strong at, like it's hard finding somebody specifically strong in that. Um, and I, but, uh, you know, the biggest thing was like work ethic. Like it was it's always been hard to me to find somebody that can like really push me or work or work harder than me or work at the same level as me. So, you know, I went at it alone. And um, but if you can't, I do see the benefits in having a co-founder and I see why, um, you know, like VCs and investors, they want um, a startup that has a, a co-founders, co-founders on a team or more than one person, just because it, it, it is tough. It is a lonely journey. And, you know, having someone to relate to. And I'm hoping that this this show, this 9 percent could be that for somebody to 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 say, you know, you're not alone. I've been through it. And um, these are common feelings, but that was really a challenging time for me. And um, and it, it still can be, but like as I've grown and the business has grown, you know, the team has gotten a little larger. Um, I just learned to, to deal with things. And I will say success has, has helped stuff. Like, I mean, as you get more successful and, you know, the business gets a little more even kill and it's not so much, you know, not so cr crazy ups and downs, uh, you feel better. Uh, but you never know when a pandemic might hit and then wipe everything off and you start again. I mean, that also happened. But um, but but yeah, so that was a really tough thing. And I would say that's a, a, a very tough thing to manage. They even have like business coaches. They have they have business therapists and counselors. Uh, th these resources are out there. And I, honestly, I probably if I knew they were if I knew they existed at the time, I probably would have um, reached out to one of those things. But. But hey, that was that was that was a big thing there. So that's 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 number one. OK, number two, work life balance. Um, I like I mentioned earlier, like I am a really, really, really hard worker. Like I, 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 I go and I go, 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 go um, from my days of being uh, being in music and uh, being a rapper and uh, owning my own studio and eventually getting a go record and having a licensing publishing company like even from them days, like as long as I can remember, I just always was like all nighters, just working hard. I used to have this saying that, and I, you know, I still kind of believe it, but it's not the thing that drives me as much anymore. But I would be like, if I take a minute off, that's a minute away from my goal. And it sounds good. And it's one of them like things to, like really work. But if you really do that every single day, like that's not a good balance there. And it could drive somebody crazy. Now, do you get the results from that? Yeah, you do get the results from that. I'm, I'm, you're, you're looking at it. Um, but it's not, I will say as, like if you, if you have a family, a wife, you know, I'm married, I have kids. Um, it's just not about you anymore in your life. And so understanding that you have to be present for other people. You have to be, you know, like being an entrepreneur has created this, this extreme flexibility with my schedule. And I'm able to, to, to go to school, uh, you know, uh, programs and or if the kids get sick, I could drop everything and go pick them up real quick and bring them to my job and not have to explain anything to anybody. Um, so those things are all great. But when you are in go mode and you just go, 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 um, 
you know, it's it, it's it's a tough thing, especially when you have other people that depend on your presence, that that love you and love your presence. Um, that work life balance, you you will find it starting to chip away at you. But honestly, I really don't know what the solution there is. Like, I'm just being super honest because it's like it's like even like athletes or anybody that really wants to, like. Whatever you have, whatever you do in your craft, if you're trying to reach the top level of it, it takes sacrifice. And it just sucks that your life can be that sacrifice. Like, I don't know if you can sacrifice the work side of it because that's what causes the results to come. So for me in my life over the years, it's got easier as... um my team has grown and as like now my wife actually works for the company. Uh, she's our, uh, you know, she's our retail sales store manager, everything above the store. I forget her exact title. She probably gonna kill me for this, but, uh, but, uh, she pretty much runs our retail operations. But, um, but now it's a lot, it's a lot better. And I will say, you know, my kids has grown and they're, you know, it's not the baby stages anymore. And it's like, it's not that pressure of someone's at home, the opposite others at home with the baby rocking them and you just like, I got to go, I got to get it. And so, um, and especially I would say it's probably even harder too when you're not seeing results. That's probably when it's even tougher. I mean, I thank God that I'm, I've been able to, to see results and my wife has been able to see results. So it kind of really like maybe the ends, you know, what's it was saying? The ends uh, justify the means, but you know, it's tough. It is very tough. And that's the realization of being an entrepreneur. And, you know, I can't front and try to give you a solution to it when, you know, I'm still looking for that solution. But I'm just letting you know it is part of those things that is tough. And you make a decision and a sacrifice for hopefully that in the long term, um, it just all be worth it. And, you know, that's what that's what that's what we banking on here. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it is. All right, y'all. On to number three. Number three. Um, the pains that come with scaling, scaling your business. Um, a lot of people don't think about this. I remember for me, when we first kind of took off and we got really busy for this first time and it was, it was just me. I, I did everything. It was, I was a one man show for everything. And that was the first time I ever felt, um, if I don't grow, I'm going to drown. And it was a weird feeling, but it was because all of a sudden we just got tons of orders coming in. We're to the point where like all my all my time is like literally shipping orders. But then, oh my goodness, I'm getting chats here like left and right. And if I chat and try to help a customer, I can't ship out the orders. And if I can't ship out the orders on time, people will complain to write bad reviews that was late. But if we don't answer the phone or we don't answer the chat, people gonna be mad there and blah, 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 blah. And it was like, I was feeling this thing of like, if we don't grow, grow the team, just uh, uh, grow our processes, just scale up, scale up to grow. It cannot long. It can't be me just be by myself doing everything. It's impossible to do it to that level. And I hope that you all get to that level and get to experience it because it is a good problem to have. But you'll soon realize that growth. There is pains that come with growth. Um, for something as simple as. Hiring an employee. Um, when you when you hire an employee and their their livelihood is now part of what you promised them or your you know whatever uh, mechanism whatever structure you have you have created, like people depend on that. That's a pressure on itself of of, of scaling. Um, how how to finance scaling. Um, when you're growing, like, do you want to go the investor route? Do you want to give up equity? Do you want to keep um, keep taking loans on your and be the personal guarantee of all this stuff? Like, if all the houses and the, the cards fall down, it's still falling down on you. Like, you think you get to a point in your business where, oh, I'm being successful and some of this eases up. But like, no, it's just like risk and another risk and another layer of risk and another layer of risk. And it's like, when does it like... When does it get easy? When is it? When does it feel smooth where you can take these risks? Um, 
But scaling, and I would say it's probably even still to this day, like like everything I'm mentioning, something I I, I struggle with or something that's challenging to me. Um, you know, you know, taking a business from you know a hundred thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars to start off, or a hundred thousand dollars to 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 five hundred thousand dollars to a million dollars, and then from that million to five million, it's like it. You also get to a level of I've never done this before. Like, okay, I, I got my business to a million dollars or something like that. Or honestly, we've we've kind of hit that in revenue uh, there. But like, I've never, I've never built a business to get to five million or ten million. Like, I can feel it. I can understand. I can see the way there. I can see the path. I can look at the analytics and say, oh, if we do this more, we'll get this. If we can convert this 2% more customers, it should result in this. You know, I get it. But it's like, how do you, how do you motivate everyone? How do you, how do you, how do you know you're making the right decisions on, on that level? Like the right hires, like it's just, it's just so much more that comes with scaling a business and growing a business. Um, that the pressure of that is just, is just amazing. Um, and, and, you know, like I said, I hope this might be a stage where people don't feel until they're further along in their business to the point where you feel like you have to grow. But again, like I said, if you, if you're not growing, you're literally going to be drowning. And if, and until you know what that feels like, you probably haven't grown to that level. But um, but then this also goes back to also, you know, me being a solo founder and, you know, doing everything myself. Again, if there was a co-founder, we kind of like both could tackle these things. It might have been a little easier. But um, scaling is is extremely hard and and everything that comes with it and the pressures that come with it does not change. You know, I, I every time I hire someone to this day, um, I still feel the same pressure of like, OK, is this going to work out like Sometimes you have to hire people uh, in your slow season just to prepare for your peak season. So you have time to train and then you're like, OK, I'm paying someone and I'm just seeing money go out the door. And like the, the money isn't coming in like that because it's, it's, it's a difficult time. So like wrapping your mentals around that or trusting yourself, trusting your skill set, trusting your business, trusting your structure that you formed in your processes that you're going to continue to be successful. That's a hard thing like. I haven't got to the point where I'm so I've I've gotten a little better at it, but like I'm still nervous that our peak season won't come or like or like people won't buy from us next year. Like what if they change their mind? What if there's a competitor that comes out and they and it's not as good as it was the year before? And then you make all these risks and you take all these make these new investments based on the future. And what if the future doesn't pan out like that? Like there's always something going on mentally. It's crazy, but um, that's the reality of it. And the reality of it is, everyone would love to get to that level where you start to scale a business. But trust me, it is nothing. Uh, it is nothing easy about it. Okay, nothing easy about it. Um, number four, cash flow management. Okay, this was very important and very impactful as well. Um, the first time I experienced, uh, what negative cash flow feels like, especially for my business, cause we're, we're, we're pretty much a seasonal business. We have seasonality and most businesses do. You have your peak periods. Um, you know, you might have your slow period of time of year. Um, but most businesses have that, but, um, I would say the most challenging thing for entrepreneurs and small business owners, if you're not a financial expert, if you're not great at budgeting, if you're not a bookkeeper, if you're not, if you don't understand QuickBooks like that, like you just know how to run your business. That's, that's where my expertise is. I know how to sell this product. I know how to do this service. Like that's what I do well. But understanding cash flow and how you have to, it has to be positive for you to survive. For example, again, my business was season, seasonal. Um, through the spring and the summer, we're like flush with cash. And I remember my first year of being flush with cash, it was like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. But what I did when we had the, a, a really great year, a really great season, I started thinking about the next season. And I started, and I made, I remember when I made my first hire. And that first hire was around the fourth quarter. It was like, you know, preparing for spring that was coming. But the fourth quarter was really, really, really slow. 
And then I just brought somebody on to pay them. And it was like money was running out of the bank account like thousands and thousands a day. Like it was, it was, it was going and you know, you're still marketing, you're still doing all this stuff like that, that costs money and you're still paying rent in your place and you're doing all this stuff. And it's like, uh, like, okay, I see on the books that say we up like this much, but where's the money in the bank? And so, um, that was my first lesson there. And it was like, I'm, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually speak on that on a, on its own episode about like when I thought I was going out of business for real, but it had everything to do about cash flow. It had everything to do about understanding, uh, you know, in my world also, we, we have returns and things like that. Like if I just got a big sale, I remember my first big sale, my first large sale, it was actually a production. Um, I think it was, uh, I forgot the movie it was, but it was, it was a, it was a large major film and they maybe bought $10,000 worth of stuff. Um, but they returned $5,000 of it. And that was not great. That was not great at all. Especially when I'm, now I have inventory that I had no uh, uh, plans to buy. So that was a tough thing. But can you imagine if I took that whole 10 and went to Las Vegas like, oh, just made me just make this money. Just like, and then I got to give it back. Cash flow. You got to project returns. You got to project what your return rate is. Like all this stuff matters. So as quickly as you can grasp your cash flow, how you're making money, projections and all that stuff, it is important. It is so important. And it will, um, you know, it, hopefully it'll stop, you, stop some headaches from coming around. But if you, if you don't have a grasp on that, it will hit you and it will hit you hard and you will feel it and it, <laughs> and it can put you out of business. So cash flow management, why being an entrepreneur is very hard, okay? The last thing we're going to talk about, okay, we're going to talk about number five, and it is managing burnout and being a leader. And I kind of put these two together because, uh, well, I'll explain why. And I kind of talked about burnout with like work-life balance and scaling a business and things like that. But burnout for me is, again, going every single day, 24-7, 365 days, like eventually it catches up with you. Like there's no, there's no way around it. It's going to catch up with you. You might have a, all of a sudden a week where you don't even want to get out of bed. You just, your body just breaks down. But even from mentally or just like finding, people always say, oh, I'm going to give 110%. I'm going to give 120%, all this stuff. You can only give 100%. Okay, that's, that's all you got to give. It's only 100%. And if something happens at home or if something happens in the business and it takes your focus away, whatever the case may be, that's going to take you away from running your business and, and, and really giving your optimal you know, effort to this thing. But when you get to the point where, <clears throat> where it's just, it's, it's no longer fun and it's no longer maybe... This one, you hope you start a business that your passion is really, really driving it. Um, for me, my passion is not in fashion. My passion is not in suits or tuxedos. Oh my gosh. Doom, doom, doom. But I have a passion in e-commerce. I have a passion in business. I have a passion in marketing, digital marketing. So it makes it make sense. But when you don't have a full passion in something, it could allow some days to be like, you know, I don't feel like doing nothing today because like you're not, you're not, you're not, you just don't feel like it, it, could, it could start feeling like a job, even if you're making money, you know. Um, and also a burnout thing is on the flip side of it, what I feel in the, the what I feel a lot often nowadays is the burnout of, of success. Like when I first got successful and I first started making some money and I first could like take my, my foot off the gas and be like, whew, I could take uh, some time off. Well, y'all y'all know, let me tell y'all, I didn't, the first time I took time off of Perfect Tux, okay, we've been seven years in. Last year was my 10 year anniversary and we went to Hawaii, me and my wife went to Hawaii and it was the first time ever, ever that I didn't look at an order in one day. Like I did not look at an order. So that was in seven years. Every single day I look at an order and I process it or whatever. So it was so refreshing to, to, to have that time. But like when you do reach that level where maybe the business is operating on itself, then it's like, okay, I, I kind of want to chill. 
And it's like, I kind of want to relax. I'm like, I'm, I am burnt out. Let me relax. But then on the flip side of that, it's like, okay, I have to motivate a team. Again, being a leader. That's the second part of that, being a leader. I have to motivate a team to, to grow and to scale and all this stuff and keep people, keep people lined up. Because if I just sit on my hands, like the truth of the matter is, None of your employees and none of you, you know, you hire and you, you, you hope that you get some people that really feel passionate about what you do. But no one's going to feel as passionate about what you do as you, you know, uh, you know, the fact that matters. And ho- hopefully you remember what it was like to be an employee. And you, sometimes you just want your check. And then, <laughs> and then when the time is up, you're like, OK, I'm out of here. I just want my check. So it's like a tough thing of like managing the burnout, but also being present and being a leader for your team and like growing the business again, scaling the business and all that comes with it. It's a very difficult juggle. And, um, and yeah, man, burnout is real. Burnout is super real. And it is very, very hard, period. Okay. But um, as you can see with this episode, there wasn't a lot of solutions here. There wasn't a lot of, but hey, hey, do this, read this book, read this book, book. heck, maybe I need to find some of these books and maybe it'll help it out. But I'm just being real. And, um, you know, from the other business owners, the other founders, again, check out episode one with uh, Shanita on it uh, from Sip, Sip and Sonder. We talked, we had a, a our discussion about just, just things that you go through. It's, it's just crazy. And just, you know, it, it just is what it is. So um, these are one of those downer episodes, but I hope that y'all feel the, the, the emotion <laughs> and the passion of the, of this episode. Cause it's really, uh, it's really a real one. And I really want you guys to, to think twice before you feel like this is something that you want to do. And then for the people that's already started a business, already entrepreneur, uh, just know you're not alone and they're not alone. And there is some resources out there for you, you know, look for those things, join an accelerator, join a business counseling, um, you know, try to find anything, your small business development center. That was a big thing for me finding my first little, um, my first coach or, you know, just to talk to somebody like there's there's resources out there for you, but you just got to seek them out. But just know you're not. These aren't no new feelings. You, it's just not you. It just is what it is. But it comes with the price of being an entrepreneur and comes with the price of being in the nine percent when there's only nine percent of us. OK, so that's what it is. Please like subscribe. Share this episode. If it resonated with you, please leave some comments down there. Uh, let me know what you thought about it. Let me know if you're going through something. Or heck, or heck let me know how you, uh, how you uh, get through these type of things. Like, let, me know, let me know what tips you have. Till next time, I'll see you later. Peace.